Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can save hundreds of hours by automating your video uploads to YouTube through Zapier. Let's get into it. So this is that final state we wanna to get to where our video is uploaded. We have the thumbnail, the title, the description, everything's filled out. But how can we make that process of getting the video into our YouTube channel as easy as possible? Especially because content creation, creating video is already hard enough. So every piece of the puzzle that we can automate, the better. I'm about to show you my full process, but if you need help automating your content workflow in your marketing, I help clients all the time save hundreds of hours. Go ahead and use the link below to book a call. So for this example, I'm using a software called Zapier. You can go ahead and go to zapier.com and you can create an account. I do believe they have a free one, but this is just a web application that allows us to connect various other applications on the internet together and allow them to, you know, to automate things that we need to get done. In this case, we're gonna be automating Google Drive and also YouTube. So once you've created an account on Zapier, then you'll be able to create a zap. And that is what I have here. In order to do the, the task at hand, we really only need two different actions. And it always starts with a trigger here, right? So what is the event that is going to cause this automation to trigger? So in this example, what I'm gonna use is a simple folder on a Google Drive, because this allows me to have a place, an inbox, so to speak, when any time a video is dropped into that folder, I can trigger that process and send that video to YouTube. So you could probably expect to say, this is the inbox folder for all videos that have been approved to be published. You know, you'd have your processes and systems set up to ensure that. But if you were to set it up this way, that's probably how it would be, right? Because it's going directly to YouTube. There's no intermediate stage. I'll show you some advanced techniques a little bit later on how you could do something a little bit more advanced. But to start, let's just talk about how do we get that folder that's dropped into the Google Drive up to YouTube. So again, when you would start to create this zap, you would come in here and you would create this trigger. In this case, it's already here. So I'll just go ahead and show you what I have in here. So you obviously set up you know, uh, which Google Drive, you have to connect Zapier to your Google Drive. Um, so you'll have to do that. And then you're gonna set up the trigger, right? So it's new file in folder. And when you have that, then you're gonna choose the account. I'm not gonna open this up because it shows my uh, account information there. But this is just where you're gonna select that Google Drive that is associated with this. And then, then you're just setting up the trigger. So you're picking the drive that, that this is connected to. And then also, what is the folder name in Google Drive that is going to be looking for these new files and triggering when that happens, right? So it just has a video inbox. And then once you've set this zap up, you can also test the trigger. And what this is doing is it's just like, this is before you've actually turned the, uh, the zap on and, and it's doing this automatically. But this is something that allows you to drop a file in that folder and then you can actually test it. And this is the data that you can then use to do any further automations down the line. But it's gonna show you, hey, once somebody uploads a video, this is the, the data that you have available to you in the rest of the automation process. And so that's it. So now you have the folder. As soon as somebody drops a video into that folder, it's gonna go ahead and create this trigger here and you'll have this data available. And really the next step is just to send that to YouTube. So again, the same way you're going to connect up your Google Drive, you're also gonna connect YouTube up to Zapier so that it can, it can manage your account and it can upload videos. Then you're gonna choose which YouTube channel it is, and then you're gonna be able to set that action up. So in this case, it's creating the video, it's sending the title, and it's actually pulling the title from the video that was uploaded. You know, you might need to do some, you know, post-production edits to that actual YouTube upload because it's right now all you have is the actual file name and the, the title might be a little bit different. Same goes with the description as well. But this is also where you get to add in the video. In terms of like picking the title, you can really look at all the different options that you have. And you could, you know, you could use the ID, you can use multiple fields, right? So if I'm here, I can also add in this one there. You just have to think about what makes sense in this situation for you. Um, in, in most cases, if you're, if you're making a simple example like this, you're gonna have to do some post edits to the video YouTube or the, the video on YouTube anyways. So you just mostly just wanna be able to easily find it. But again, I'll show you some advanced ways where you might be able to set some of these things more better before you actually do the upload. And so this is the most important one. It's just like, what is that file, right? So this is a, a special field here and all of this information is coming from step one here. You can see that. So step one, and we're looking for this right here, the file. So if we click that, that's gonna tell YouTube to use this file as the upload. And then you can set the privacy status. You can have that private, public, or unlisted. If you're gonna to have to do edits to the video after the fact, 
then best just to go unlisted, then you can get the file uploaded, you can make all the changes, and then you can finally go public from there. And then you can also select a publish at time, you can put in your tags, and you can decide whether to uh, notify your subscribers or not. So that's really all you need to do in order to set this up. You need these two actions in place, a trigger when a new file is there, and then you just upload it to YouTube, and you just fill out these, these basic fields, which came from the action beforehand. And after you get that uploaded, it's gonna look something like this, right? So I wasn't able to um, upload that thumbnail in this process here. So I'll have to change the title and the description and then fill out the rest of the, the details here and upload the thumbnail and all that kind of good stuff. But even in the situation where you don't do any other automation at all, it's really nice to have that video upload. Sometimes those video uploads can take quite a while and just getting them uploaded with the right information in the title to help you kind of find it and update, update it later are really, uh, really big time savers for you. Now, one thing, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on this, but this is a slightly more complicated version of, the th of what I just showed you. And it gives me quite a few more opportunities to clean up the data, get the, the data ready, uh, even work with a video editor to just really iron out as much of that information ahead of time so that when I do upload it, it actually has a title, it actually has a description, and some of those things are already set for me so that I don't have to do them after the fact. But the way my system works is when that new folder comes into Google Drive, it doesn't automatically upload it to YouTube. So what it's doing in a nutshell is, number one, making sure of what type of file it, it is. Is it a video file? Is it something else? And then it's actually creating a record in an Airtable database, which allows me to store information about it, update information about it, and then also track like, you know, what Google folder is it stored in? Um, and actually, you know, creating a structure around that so that everything's a little bit more organized and I'm gathering more metadata that I can use before the final upload. So I won't go into everything that happens here, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm processing that file the same way when a new file comes into the Google Drive, I'm processing it, but I, I have an intermediate step now and it goes into a database where I can keep meta information on it and I'll show that to you real quick. But it also creates a Google Drive structure and, and helps me link to all that. That way I can do some some cleanup of that data before it actually gets uploaded to YouTube. So again, I'm not gonna go into great detail on how all of these different things work. I think the, the, the thing to, to keep in mind here is, is that I'm able to now have a title and create a description. So all of this information, this, this is the copy, it links to a Google Doc that has the description of that video in, in it. It also has a link to the folder, right? So all of the videos that come in my inbox are put into the system where I can do the updates and get everything ready. I can, I can review the status of an image. I can review the status of the video. And I just have direct links to everything. So I can get everything nice and, and ready to be uploaded and, and then have the actual trigger to upload to YouTube off of criteria that I've laid out in, in my Airtable database. This is where I, I have a lot of that video come in. I can do I can just make sure certain things are in the, in the right status, whatever that might be. I have direct links to everything. And then once everything is in the right status, I have this other view here, which is called YouTube Upload. And with this, there's just a few filters here. I'm not gonna go into great detail, but when these conditions are met, what I'm telling, what, what I've basically said is that this is when it's ready to upload to YouTube. And when it hits that state, these videos will come in here and they will get published on these specific dates. It will update the status, whether it's running, whether there was an error, whether it was done. Um, and then it has the copy. This is what goes into the, into the description and the title. You can see it is more fleshed out now. And also once it's actually uploaded, it will go ahead and put the YouTube URL here and then it will get cleared out of this view. But what's cool about this is just that you can see if you break the process up into two stages, you can actually do quite a bit of uh, in between work on that data. And, and it's quite useful to have that because not only when you upload it is, it, is the title and the description already set, but now you're actually really being able to track all of your content and like the URLs to everything. And it just helps you keep incredibly organized. And then as you expand later, then you can continue to build off of these things and just continue to streamline things and make things easier and easier. Uh, in your process. So I do appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. I do also run an automation community where we talk about a lot of this automation stuff. I did link to that in the description and in the first comment below. Make sure you let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I will see you on the next video.